Hey guys, so I was getting a lot of emails from you about these Sailrite sewing machines and I had never used one before so I bought one because I wanted to see what these things were all about and we're going to do that right here on video. I ended up picking the Sailrite fabricator machine because I think that's going to be the best one for the type of upholstery that we do. It's very similar to the machine that I use on these videos that you guys have seen and I'm really excited. I just got this in the mail today. So we're gonna open this up and see what's inside. So they ship these machines in four boxes and it weighs about 110 pounds is what it said on the packing receipt. And I was actually really surprised at how much it cost. It was only $117 for the shipping, which for something this heavy, I think it's pretty reasonable. So I'm going to start cutting open these boxes and seeing what's inside. like we got all the hardware in here. These are all pieces for the for the foot pedal. Now this is actually a pretty nice little feature that I like. These uh this is a little drawer for the bottom of the machine so you can put a bunch of stuff inside here that's always nice to have oh hey look at that they're including some thread I didn't know about that this is uh, looks like it's UV yeah it's UV bonded polyester this is what we normally use size 92 so that's a nice little extra feature there. Looks like we got, they included a, uh, a seam ripper. I don't use these very often, but they're nice to have and that's a nice little extra feature addition there. Looks like we got some needles. So it looks like they gave us four packs of needles, which is pretty nice little addition there. I didn't know that they were sending these. It's uh, size 14, 16, 18, and 20. So that, uh, that'll that get us set up and going pretty good there for a while. <laughs> we also got some pre-wound bobbins, which look really nice. What else we got in here? They got a whole bag full of stuff we can, little extra stuff here. Oh, th this I saw on the video, which is kind of cool. It's a magnetic LED light that you can put on top of your machine. So I'm excited to test that one out. We'll see how that works. Looks like we got some instructions for the motor. So this motor actually, I'm really excited to see how it works because on the video it looks really nice I'm in the video I'm pretty impressed with how slow they can go through some of those thick materials which it can be a problem with some of the other machines especially with a cheaper servo motor a lot of times they don't have enough power to punch through that really, really thick stuff, but we're going to find out. So this is the motor. Looks a little bit smaller than it did in the video, but hopefully it's going to work out good for us. more hardware and some other things. 
All right, now this is the heavy one. This one has the sewing machine inside it. This thing probably weighs about, I don't know, 60, 70 pounds, something like that. Looks like we have the hand wheel there. So our spool stand, a screwdriver. Some more parts. Looks like they gave us a bunch of oil, which is really nice to have. I guess this is just, uh, this must just be some test pieces they included when they were setting up this machine. Got our bobbin winder, some bobbins, little oil thing, some more screwdrivers. Oh boy, that thing is heavy. Shoot, I'm gonna peel this plastic off here so you guys can kind of see what this machine looks like. This machine, it's really oily. I guess maybe they were worried about it getting rusty or something sitting around, but I mean, we're gonna have to clean this off. So, otherwise everything looks like it looks in the, on the website and in the video, so, so far so good. All right, so now that we've got everything unpacked, we can get to putting this thing together. Man, that was fast. No, I'm just kidding you guys. I made a separate video completely on just assembling these tables and machines and getting them ready to use. So if you're interested, make sure you check that one out. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to test this machine out and see how it does. So I figured we would just get straight to that. All right, so I'm just gonna show you guys how this machine sews on some test pieces here. And then later I'm gonna show you some other seams and pleats and how thick of material this machine can sew. Right here I'm just kind of playing with how slow the machine can go and seeing how controllable it is. You can see that it sews really slow. It's very controllable, which I like, and it does have nice speed too if you decide you want to sew fast. All right, so I'm just gonna sew a few different types of seams here just to get a feel for things and how this machine handles sewing different types of seams that we're gonna use in upholstery. So I'm just sewing a single reinforced seam right here just to test out to see how easy it is to sew nice straight line.
and you can see it came out pretty nice. Now here I'm just going to do the same thing with a French seam. And this one came out pretty nice too. I'd probably need a little bit more practice to get used to this machine before I'd be super happy with how that seam came out. All right, so here I'm going to try and sew together as many pieces of vinyl as I can to see how much this machine can actually take. So I have three pieces of vinyl right here, and I'm just going to keep adding them on as I go. And I'm doing this just to test to see, you know, the claims that the Sailrite has on how it's able to slowly and controllably sew through extremely thick material without really having any issues. And so far, I'm not having any problems right now. I've got five layers and I'm putting on a six layer right now. And it is sewing very easily through all of this and I'm not having any problem going nice and slow as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add two more layers of half inch scrim foam and see how that works as well. And, it's seem, and it seems to be sewing through this no problem. All right, so so far I've got seven layers of vinyl and two layers of half inch scrim foam, which is pretty impressive. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an eighth layer of vinyl Seems to be sewing through that pretty easily, so I'm gonna add a ninth. And finally, on this ninth layer of vinyl, I can start to feel the machines having difficulty with this. And I don't think it's actually anything to do with the power of the machine, it's just the fact that there's so much material I'm trying to feed under this machine that I think it's just too much for it. Which honestly, nine layers of material and two layers of half inch scrim foam is way more than anything that I would ever be sewing. All right, now I'm just gonna do some test pleats here just to see you know, how this machine feels when you're sewing pleats. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how the machine sews pleats. It does feed the material in a little bit kind of jerky, but you know, to be fair, I have the same complaint about a lot of machines, and it's, it's really not that big of a deal. And again, it's probably gonna take me a little bit more practice to get used to this machine and exactly how it sews before I can do a really nice job on these pleats. All right, so I've been testing this machine out for about two weeks now. And I gotta say that I'm pretty impressed with the way this machine performs for the price. I do have to say it's not the best machine I've ever used, but you're talking like four or five thousand dollars for a machine that's gonna be the best thing that you've ever used. So I think this it's a pretty it really is a pretty good option. For, I mean, you're talking $1,400 plus another $100 for shipping, $1,500 for a brand new machine that works this nice is, in my opinion, a pretty good deal if you're in the market for a brand new machine. So I've got a few small things about this machine that I don't like, and then I have a whole list of things that I'm really impressed about. So we're going to go through that right now. All right, so one of the few things that I don't really like about this machine is that the table is a little bit wobbly. You can see here how the frame it flexes back and forth when you push left and right on this machine. Now this isn't a huge deal because most of the time everything we're doing is from front to back. The only time that makes me worried about this is when I'm moving the machine around from wherever I'm working it seems like maybe it's not super sturdy and I think the reason why this is is because there's only one bolt here on this cross member most of the other tables that I've used that 
don't have this problem. They have two bolts right here, and I think what that does is really just help to make this frame a little bit more sturdy so that it doesn't flex back and forth this direction. I don't think this is a major, major deal, and if it bothers me too much, what I'm going to do is I can just drill another hole right here and add a bolt. So it's not that big of a deal. One other thing that I didn't really like is that this access cover to get to the bobbin, it, it hits on the table here and you can't open it without tilting the machine back like this and then you're able to access everything and get back there. I mean it's not a huge deal, it's just a little bit annoying and I think what I'm probably going to end up doing is just shimming up these little rubber pieces right here that the machine rests on and I think that'll just bring it up just enough to where I can open and close this without any problem and it won't bother me anymore. Alright, so one of the other things I really didn't like is that this sticker, it's already peeling off and it really doesn't stick that well at all. So I actually did contact Sailrite about this and they said no problem, they'll send me out another sticker as soon as I want. Um, I really don't use these stickers at all or this whatever you want to call this yardstick on front of the table here so I'm just going to take this off and I'm not even going to worry about it. Alright so one of the features I absolutely love about this machine is this engraved needle plate here and what this does is it has all of our seam allowances already marked out right here on the needle plate so we don't have to get the tape measure out and you know, measure out our seam allowance. It's already right there done for us. And if we want, we can even add our piece of tape like we normally do and just stick it right there. And it's super easy. We don't have to, you know, spend a couple minutes checking with the tape measure. I really like this feature. It's a nice addition. It's got all of our seam allowances from quarter inch to half inch, three quarters, and an inch. It's a really great feature to have on this machine. I haven't, I actually have not seen this on any other machine and I really think it's a great idea. Alright, so this machine also has self-oiling capability which is something that I actually really do like. It's a feature that you don't really see on cheaper machines that much. This is something that's, you know, on the more expensive machines. So this is really cool. Basically there's just an oil reserve down here in the bottom and as you guys know, if you've watched some of my videos, you know, I don't like to do extra work. I, if there's an easier way for things to happen, that's what I like. And that's what I like about this self-oiling feature is it's going to save you time because you don't have to be oiling your machine, you know, every time you use it. And you always do want to do that if you don't have the self-oiling because it's going to save your machine. Now, I'm not saying that you never have to manually oil this machine, but what it's going to do is reduce a lot the amount of times that you do have to manually oil your machine because it's going to be doing it constantly for you while you're using it. Alright, so this is a nice feature that you don't see on a lot of older machines, and that's that when you raise up the foot on this machine, the tension discs, they automatically loosen so that Basically, it makes it really easy to pull thread through the machine without breaking your thread or having to rock your hand wheel back and forth. This is something that's on, um, you know, a lot of the nicer, newer machines. You don't really see this on the older machines, and I really like this because it just makes it so easy to just pull your piece out, cut your threads off, and you don't have to worry about you know, rocking the hand wheel and trying to smoothly pull things out of there like you see me do on a lot of the other videos with my older machine. Alright, so I think it's really interesting how this machine, the belt that goes from the machine to the motor, it's a toothed belt and I've never seen this on any other sewing machine before and I think, you know, this, it's, a, it's really nice because you don't lose any, you don't get any belt spin when you're traveling at low speeds trying to push through a piece of fabric and I think that this is one of the reasons why that small motor is able to power through those thick pieces of material without really having any problem at all. Um, I was really impressed with that on this machine uh, and I think you know a lot of the other machines they they have the V-belt same like you would see on an old car 
which don't get me wrong, those work fine too. It's just sometimes when you're traveling at low speeds and you really got to punch through that piece of material, that belt will start spinning on the motor and you know you get stuck and you have to push it through by hand and uh, you know this is just a one little advantage on this machine that you'll have. The other thing what's kind of interesting with this machine is they have this pod, they call it the posi pin flywheel balance wheel something like that anyways basically what happens is you pull this pin out and then the machine the motor is disengaged from the machine so really the reason that you're going to be using that is when you're winding bobbins um, so when you're winding the bobbin you're going to be running the machine with the belt and everything because that's where the bobbin winder runs off of and what that does is it disengages the machine from actually running while you're doing that which is kind of a cool feature because it's going to reduce the wear on your machine do I think that's you know uh, amazing must buy it because of this no but it is, it's cool. I like the idea. And the other thing is, you're, they have a patent on that system, so you're, I don't think you'll be able to find this on any other sewing machine around. So if that's something you like, that's something to keep in mind. All right, so I wanna talk about my absolute favorite thing about this machine, and that's the servo motor. I am extremely impressed with this servo motor. Honestly, I don't understand at all how it's possible for this little the, the motor it's tiny when you take it out of the box you're gonna you're gonna be like there's there's absolutely no way this motor can do its job but somehow it does I don't I don't get it but it works really well and it's incredibly controllable that's the one thing that I'm amazed about is how easy it is to control this machine I mean I was sewing through if did you see this earlier it was uh, this is nine layers of vinyl in two layers of half inch scrim foam and this machine didn't it started to have a little bit of difficulty when I put that ninth layer of vinyl on there but I mean that's crazy you're never you're never gonna sew anything like this so the fact that it can just crawl straight through all of this at the slowest speed you want it to go I mean really I'm gonna show you again right here and you can see all of it it's it's really amazing. The motor on this machine is going to make it really, really easy for anybody to learn. And that's, you know, one thing maybe I'm a little bit jealous about because I had to learn, you know, on a, I had to learn machine control and everything. And this machine, I mean, you literally, you're going to pick sewing up so quickly because you don't, there is no learning machine control with this motor. It's just, it's that easy to use. So we're just gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna show you right here. I mean, you see how s slow I can go if I want, just like this. The problem what people have when they're learning how to sew is getting the feeling for how much to push that pedal down. Because on most machines, and even with servo motors, other servo motors where you can control the speed, it's still a very delicate, it's still a very fine line between where you need to, how much you need to push that throttle down and everything to get it before, you know, it takes off on you. And this, I mean, it's just, it's so easy to control this. And you can see how slowly, I mean, most machines, they won't go this slowly through a stack of material this thick. You know, you really, you really have to have good machine and throttle control and that takes time to learn on the other machines and you just won't have to do this I mean you can see here we're just going through all this material really without any problem You can see here now that we're on the ninth layer, it is having a little bit of trouble going through all of this. But like I said, you would never, you're never going to be sewing this much together. And I mean, it's. It, 
it's really it's, it's incredible how easy it is to control this this machine it's gonna help anybody that's learning to sew it, this in particular this motor don't forget about the machine but this motor it's really going to make it easy for anybody who's learning to sew to learn how to sew. All right, so the other thing I'm really impressed about this Sailrite machine is the manual. It's really a great manual. There's lots of colored pictures. They show you everything that you need to know. And um, if you've ever gotten another machine, the manuals, they're pretty poor on all of them. You know, they're really black and white pictures, it's hard to understand, and the English isn't very good. But, uh, I mean, this machine, it even shows you everything from maintenance and checking timing and all kinds of stuff that you'll need to know. It has the parts diagram in the back if you ever need to order a part for these machines. So that's another thing I'm pretty impressed about is the quality of the manual and the information that's in here. Okay, so there was one other thing when I first got this machine that I noticed, and it did concern me a little bit, and that was the fact that it looked almost identical to the Conso 206 and the Taxo 111. I don't know if any of you guys have seen those machines, but they do look extremely similar to this one, and um, they go for about $1,000 brand new with the table, you know, you can find deals online for those machines somewhere around there. I actually reached out to Sailrite to find out what the difference between their machine is compared to these other lower budget machines. And come to find out that they actually do quite a bit of work to these machines to make them much different. Apparently they actually work directly with the manufacturer and they help design better parts for this machine and some of these other machines that uh, that are out there apparently you know they don't come properly tuned they come straight from the factory with parts that aren't made quite as well now I'm not saying these other machines the Conso 206 and the Taxo they're bad machines I don't know I've never used them but they do have good reviews online and I've seen people perfectly happy with those machines but from the research that I did and talking with the owner actually Matt at Sailrite through email he, t he explained to me a whole lot of the process of what they do to make these machines better and uh, they do the all the tuning and th there's a lot to go into tuning these sewing machines that actually I didn't even know completely about myself. So if you want to see the conversation that we had about these machines compared to the other ones, I'm going to include my email in a link below. You can read everything that we talked about and they can go more into depth on you know what the difference is between these machines and why they are so much better. So that made me feel a lot better about that and plus the fact that they actually took the time to answer that question and they weren't you know offended or anything so that really speaks to the customer service that Sailrite provides. They were really happy to talk about anything that I wanted to know about the machine, you know. So, and I, I know that they'll provide the same customer support for you guys. And I'm not, I'm, I'm doing this strictly for you guys, this review. So, all right, so what's my final opinion on this machine and who would I recommend it to? So, this machine, it is a really good machine, and like I said, the motor on it, it's really, it's really impressive. I, again, I, I don't understand how you can have so much control over a motor that small with so much power in it. It's really, I haven't seen anything like that before. So I, what I'm going to say is, for anybody that's wanting to learn how to sew or learn in this trade, and they're just getting into it and they have the budget to spend, you know, $1400 on a machine. This is I think it's definitely you're definitely going to be happy with this machine. It's a good you're going to be able to learn extremely fast on that. And that's what I like about this. This machine it's very learnable for for newcomers. I'm going to re also recommend this machine for anybody at home that's doing side work or projects on their own and they're not trying to make this their living you know th this is going to be a great machine for you guys I think uh, if it's in your budget I would say go for it 
If you're completely new to sewing and you're still, you know, testing out to see if this is something that you're interested in, you might be better off looking for a used machine on Craigslist or somewhere else like that, finding something secondhand, you know. You can find a good deal, especially if you're patient and you have some time. You can definitely find some good deals out there. And then later on, if you decide, you know, you are really interested in learning upholstery, you can always upgrade later to, you know, a machine like this or something else. You can sell your old one. You know, sewing machines, they usually sell pretty well secondhand, so it's not something you have to worry too much about. So if you're doing upholstery professionally or you're maybe you're considering doing it professionally, I would recommend making the investment into a higher level machine. As good as this machine is, I think that if you're using it every single day, you're probably going to outgrow it fairly quickly. So I would just recommend if you're doing this as a living to just make, you know, that little bit higher level of an investment in your final product because the sewing machine is something that you know you use on a daily basis if you are doing this professionally and you want to make sure that you're turning out the best product that you can. I'm not saying you can't do great work with this machine. I'm just saying if you're going to be doing it every single day, I think you're going to want to make that investment in the little bit higher quality of a machine. All right, so that's my final honest review on this machine, the Sailrite Fabricator. Like I said, there's a small few things about this machine that I didn't like and a big list of all the things that I really did like. So if this is something you're thinking about getting, I would say go for it. You're definitely going to be happy, especially if you're new to this and you're learning how to sew. Like I said, this machine, it's, it's extremely learnable and that's going to be really great for anybody that's starting out or you know even if you're just doing your own projects at home you know one or two interiors a year something like that a machine like this it's going to be perfect for you so if you do decide you want to buy one of these machines i have an amazon link in the description below and if you buy it through there you really help out the channel you know a small portion of that sale goes to the lucky needle and then i can make more videos for you guys and it just helps us out so if you decide to do that, I'd appreciate your support. And make sure you go to our website, theluckyneedle.com. We got lots of really good training videos on there that aren't on YouTube. So make sure you check those out. And you know, if any of you guys are watching this and you've already bought this machine, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. We want to know, you know, everybody's opinion on this machine. So let's hear it. Mm -hmm.